They've come from villages all over Bihar to cheer on a most unusual politician. Veena Devi is fighting to become one of the 545 members of India's next parliament, but she has little political experience or interest in public office. In fact, she's only the official candidate. The real one is standing next to her, Suraj Bhan Singh, her husband and a man locally known as the Godfather. Unable to stand himself because of a murder conviction and nearly a hundred other complaints for murder, kidnapping and extortion, he hopes that his wife's election will help keep justice at a safe distance. Suraj Bhan Singh's case isn't an isolated one. 17% of Indian candidates have a criminal record. In the last elections in 2009, some even campaigned from inside their prison cells. The law has now been amended to stop this, but many politicians with criminal records feel invincible. Suraj Bhan Singh, for example, seems to have little regard for his constituents. And there's a good chance that the godfather will win. That's because he has the support of Narendra Modi, the prime ministerial candidate who has promised to rid Indian politics of criminals. Modi and his party are strong favourites to win these elections. His alleged involvement in the 2002 religious riots in Gujarat has made him a controversial figure. But since then, Modi has sought to project himself as an able administrator. A messiah will fix all of India's problems. Modi is an excellent campaigner, energizing crowds with his nationalistic rhetoric. His party wants him to be seen as a great unifier and is willing to pay any price. At one of his rallies, we found that at least part of the crowd had been paid off. In India, most political parties use these methods and they no longer shock anyone. But it doesn't stop there. Some candidates in the world's largest democracy even buy votes. We travel to Bihar state to meet the people behind these politicians. Bihar has a reputation for criminality. We filmed with hidden cameras. The vote fixers take us on a tour of the village. A vote costs anything from 2 to 12 euros. This man hopes to buy 500 supporters for Modi. How do you know that they're not going to vote for someone else? The vote fixer is now more relaxed and we no longer need to film him with hidden cameras. All the money is party. They're giving you money. Okay. They're giving you money to give. Gift. How much they give you? And the number of police raids is rising. Cash, liquor, money, gifts, even alcohol and drugs to buy the votes of addicts. This year, in less than a month of campaigning, the police have seized 25 million euros in cash, close to 3 million litres of alcohol and 70 kilos of heroin from members of different political parties.
And when gifts aren't enough to convince voters, crooked politicians have other means of getting their way. And if you don't do it? Crime and corruption are the twin scourges of Indian democracy. The Congress party, which has been in power for the last decade, has done little to curb either. Most Indians want a change from the constant news of scams and scandals. And their frustration is increasingly directed at Rahul Gandhi, the 43-year-old heir of India's most prestigious political dynasty. Critics say he's dull and uninspiring. His poll ratings are languishing, and many feel his party will record its worst ever performance in these elections. But with the economy struggling, Indians have more immediate concerns and the Congress has failed to address them. These empty seats reflect the lack of enthusiasm for a party that's accused of abandoning the poor and stuffing its own pockets. But things are changing and a revolution of sorts is underway. At the other end of the country, in the state of Gujarat, we met members of the Aam Admi, or Common Man's Party. Most of them lack political experience and they have just one key message, an India free of corruption. They're led by Arvind Kejriwal, a former bureaucrat who's organized mass protests against corruption. Today, he's come to challenge Narendra Modi, the favorite, on his home turf. He's a very honest person and Modi also says that he has removed all corruption from Gujarat. So we are here to ask the people and to find out whether he has actually removed corruption or not. You will be the next Prime Minister of India? Who? Who? You? No! My aim is to unite the people of India against corruption, not to become the Prime Minister. Kejriwal receives a hostile welcome. His opponents accuse him of destabilizing the country and its institutions, of being an agitator without a political project. Arvind Kejriwal wants to meet Modi, but Gujarat's strongman refuses to speak to him and has sent the police instead. Kejriwal eventually chooses to address another Indian leader. Followed by a media scrum, he makes his way to the ashram of Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi ji is a very respected figure for all of us. Members of Kejriwal's party claim to follow the values of Gandhi, humility and simplicity, but they're not averse to milking the media's attention. Attaching themselves to Gandhi is a political calculation it might win them some extra votes. Yeah, there are millions of Gandhiji's are in India. If everybody will follow the ideology of Gandhiji, then we can revolutionize India. But this revolution, as members of the Aam Admi Party have understood, must take place at the ballot box. Our next destination is Delhi, India's capital, where the Aam Admi Party enjoyed a surprising success in regional elections last December. In the footsteps of Gandhi, Aam Admi leader Rajesh Garg wants to project an image of modesty. He's campaigning door to door in a style that's become the hallmark of his party. Their election symbol is a broom, with which they say they'll sweep India clean of corruption. These modern-day Robin Hoods claim that by recovering the money stolen by politicians, they'll be able to provide water and electricity to slum dwellers. Some say the Aam Admi Party's promises are impossible to deliver, but voters here are still seduced by them. We follow Rajesh out to the slum. 
He's traded his official car for a motorized rickshaw, paid for by his constituents. Hello. रोड के जो गड्ढे हैं उनको समझ लेता हूं जो रोड के साइड में जो गार्बेज है या कोई समस्या होती है It is this promise of accessible politics that brought his party victory in their first ever election The middle class and the poor voted for the Aam Aadmi Party and rickshaw drivers even campaigned for them ये भी हमारी तरह ही हैं ये आम लोगों में से बने हुए हैं आम लोगों में से चुने हुए हैं ये अच्छे लगते हैं लोगों के पास गाड़ियां हैं Rajesh and his party have attacked the VIP culture surrounding Indian politics. Never happened in the history of the Indian democracy. This is the first time that uh, our leaders are down to earth and you know they are really I'm impressed the whole India is now you know revolutionized to cement his image as an ordinary man Rajesh even drives his own rickshaw but when he arrives at the Delhi State Assembly things get a little complicated The anti-corruption crusaders of the Aam Aadmi Party have yet to prove that they can bring about lasting change. In Delhi, the government lasted just 49 days before Kejriwal resigned in protest at being unable to pass a law against corruption. Many saw it as a sign that the party isn't capable of governing. The 28 elected members of the Aam Aadmi Party still have their seats in the assembly. Amongst them is a 26-year-old slum dweller. The Aam Aadmi Party wanted to make Delhi the laboratory of its political revolution. Kejriwal and his followers now hope to make a larger impact across India. But it will be a tall order. India seems to want a strong man, not a common one, to fix the many ills of its huge but imperfect democracy.